Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Gambit number one, and this comic just came out on the 27th of July this year, 2022. And what's intriguing about this is it is a five issue mini series written by Chris Claremont, the longtime and um, magisterial writer of the X-Men, most renowned for his uh, unprecedented and unrepeated by any other writer run on Marvel characters, the X-Men from 1975 to 1991. And what's happening in this story is he is revisiting um, a story from Uncanny X-Men 265 and 267 back in 1990. And he's uh, filling in um, the blank, so to speak, or at least he's filling out a montage sequence from Uncanny X-Men 267. So I'll just show you that now. So here we have Uncanny X-Men 267. There's a video on the channel uh, concerning this particular issue. And here is the montage in question and it concerns uh, D.H. Storm and Gambit arriving in um, New Orleans and uh, visiting the place and then uh, taking up this uh, Robin Hood style uh, life there whereby they rob from uh, the rich and criminal and they redistribute to the poor. So months go by uh, while they're uh, working together um, as Robin Hood style thieves. And what Claremont has done is returned to those months and is uh, telling that untold story in this brand new uh, limited series. So uh, the noteworthy too is the cover here is by Wilts Portacio, uh, colored by Alex Sinclair. So using modern coloring techniques but uh, Portacio was the artist of uh, Uncanny X-Men 267, finishing Jim Lee breakdowns. And um, so he's returning to these uh, characters also for the covers um, of the limited series. So inside the book, we have our splash page here. Chris Claremont Ryder, Sid Cotian, the artist, and Espen uh, Grundet Yearn, the color artist. So those are your main creatives there. And what's happening is uh, Gambit is walking down, um, or walking on a sidewalk um, in Cairo, Illinois. And uh, um, Aurora, uh, DH Storm is flying by on a skateboard and she's bumped into this um, guy on his uh, 90s style mobile telephone like a brick there and what happens is that the guy thinks uh, that uh, he might have been um, robbed pickpocketed but it seems not but what happens is um, that uh, Gambit has actually accessed the guy's key and has cloned it uh, just in the uh, blink of an eye so to speak while all that action happened so Aurora's part in it was misdirection Gambit is the master thief so they are uh, in here's the um, handy um, explanation page so it's get it gets new readers caught up on the whole background uh, to uh, storms being in um, a de-aged to the um, to around 11 or 12 years old. Uh, her first meeting with Gambit, all of this um, I've covered in videos on the channel, my video on Uncanny X-Men 248 and my video on Uncanny X-Men 267. So please do check those out. Um, and any, yeah, as the editor's note says here, this story takes place in the previously unexplored time period, only glimpsed during Uncanny X-Men 267. So uh, they, uh, Gambit sets um, Storm a test to enter into uh, the guy's house there. 
and she tries the chimney, but she gets um, traumatized by the prospect of going down into the dark um, chimney flue uh, because uh, she has this history as a child of being um, caught in the debris of a collapsed building, which gave her um, claustrophobia um, as a child and an adult. So that's one of the characteristics of Storm that she suffers from claustrophobia. So instead of going down the chimney, she goes in through uh, the door uh, using her uh, rudimentary, uh, because she's prepubescent, uh, mutant power that, to control the weather. Um, and in this case, a little uh, piece of uh, lightning here uh, to pop the lock. In she goes, Gambit's already there, however, because he uh, used that moment of distraction to clone uh, the homeowner's key. Uh, uh, Storm is upset. She manifests this uh, rain cloud over Gambit. But um, he says to her, we did good, Ro. Money, The money will go to those who need it. And these papers, well, if a man don't want scandal, better he should behave himself. So there's obviously some incriminating papers there. He's not just a rich man. He's a criminal of some description, uh, unspecified. So that is what you know, uh, Gambit and uh, Storm are up to in their Robin Hood style life here. Um, and then we get uh, um, a section whereby this character, Jacob Rees, FBI agent, he is a puppet of uh, the Shadow King. And Aurora has um, a history with the Shadow King going back to Egypt and Africa. This is the... Um, the normal form of the Shadow King. Um, and here is his like kind of human type form. He's this obese um, man, um, but this is how he manifests otherwise, like a kind of demon. He um, eats mutant souls. Um, so Aurora wants to, uh, um, you know, um, uh, get even with this guy and uh, let him know that he can't have everything his own way. And what's interesting here is in this scene, obviously Gambit and Storm are um, uh, like Reese and the Shadow King is unaware of them. And they're observing the arrival. And this is um, unexpected. This is something that we never saw um, during those original issues back in 1990. Moira McTaggart is, uh, has been brought to a meeting with um, Reese. And I think this is uh, Leanne Shen, um, who features here on the cover of Uncanny X-Men 267, who's bringing McTaggart to Jacob Rees. And there was stuff going on on Moor Island um, um, in over the last year and a half of Claremont's run on Uncanny X-Men, where Moira was acting strangely. And ultimately, it would all come to a head in uh, what's noted here, the Moor Island saga. Um, by the editor there um, where there was a combination of um, Legion on the one hand um, causing trouble and the Shadow King behind everything uh, that was going on on the island and uh, Murray McTaggart's strange behaviour as well. So Gambit is in the background watching everything um, and, uh, and indeed feeling and thinking something's not right, I can feel it in my bones. So Shadow King has his tentacles into Moira McTaggart. She's his puppet. And then we cut to uh, Aurora who uh, intervenes on her skateboard, kind of like Bart Simpson in the 90s, um, jumping in on this scene where this uh, um, policewoman is chasing um, this child who's um, stolen clothes um, from a shop. Aurora stops it, but uh, it turns out this was all part of a ploy by a gang of teenage girls who were going to ambush the police officer. They're upset that Storm has interfered and they start beating her up and Gambit arrives. And this is a nice little touch here. He's got a King card and he's got four Joker cards to take care of these uh, teenage, uh, the teenagers in the gang. So he uses his power to uh, um, kinetically charge objects uh, to uh, disrupt uh, the beating of Aurora. And then these girls have their own mentor, and that is this character, Sabine. 
who knows Gambit and Gambit knows her. And so they work out um, a truce and uh, Sabine uh, warns Storm though that uh, a challenge has been issued uh, against her for interfering in the cadet, cadets game. So Sabine is um, um, a member of uh, an international group called the Bakai and um, these are cadets um, uh, training for entry into uh, that organization. So Storm actually takes up the offer of the challenge and so we have this one-on-one -on -one combat um, in the back alley. Uh, Storm takes a kick to the chin there. So Cotian's art is very fluent, um, excellent storytelling here and we can see him using those kind of uh, manga-esque style um, postures um, storytelling, the speed lines there. Um, it's, it's nicely done. And um, and what happens though is that uh, Aurora uh, ultimately gets the better of uh, the cadet challenger and takes her out here with um, a kick uh, to the side of her face. So Sabine uh, walks the cadets away, Aurora's victorious there, and Gambit and Sabine say, um, you know, um, kind of dialogue about how Storm has made enemies um, but uh, Gambit isn't too concerned about it. Then uh, Storm is still thinking about how to send a message uh, to the Shadow King. I have to show him I'm willing to fight. Um, Gambit is uh, warning her not to be um, foolish but he decides to support her with her little scheme, which is to um, throw this pie in the Shadow King's face. As she says, I'm going to poke his pride, take him by surprise, make him feel silly in front of the world. Okay. So the response is, like she gets a response out of the Shadow King. He goes crazy there and he psychically attacks everyone who's at the restaurant. And then he twigs that it's Aurora who has uh, thrown the pie at him. And then we see this transformation of um, his true self uh, here. So fairly um, monstrous looking, a little bit um, reminiscent of Venom's look as well. And he says here, first I will claim the souls of all your fellow ex-folk. Your friends will hunt you down. At their hands you will suffer and then they will give you to me. Revenge properly crafted is all the more delicious. So it'll be interesting to see how that threat plays out um, in the rest of the series. But at this point, um, Gambit uh, warns Aurora, you know, that she's going to have to be sure not to be careless. If she was poking the Shadow King's pride, she can't get smug herself. So this is going to be um, a coming of age type uh, story uh, for these five issues and then at the end we have this interesting final um, page which introduces this character Bounty so obviously um, a bounty hunter she's just returned from a successful hunt with the head of this character and she's collecting her fee here and then next up her next target is Lila Cheney um, who's a mutant teleporter and uh, galactic uh, rock star. Um, and what's interesting here and something we never saw in the past is that Lila Cheney has some kind of relationship with Gambit and this character is going to get to Lila by um, um, grabbing Gambit or abducting him. So obviously we have to pick up the next issue, number two, coming out next month in order to find out where this story goes. So this was a very interesting um, comic uh, to read through. Um, very Claremont, uh, it's got his style there, um, a masterful style, great uh, command of uh, the different uh, styles of dialogue of the different characters. Um, a dense story too, and nicely folded into um, those few months of, uh, of Storm and Gambit um, 
um, operating together as Robin Hood style thieves um, in the middle of Uncanny X Men 267. Now, if you're looking to get your hands on a copy of 267, if you want a mint copy, it's going to cost you um, because it's the third appearance of Gambit and um, it's worth a bit of money. But an easier and cheaper way of getting your hands on the story would be by way of whoops, uh, the X-Men Epic Collection. Um, X-Men Epic Collection, the title of this collection is Dissolution um, and Rebirth. And this one collects uh, issues 248 to 267 of Uncanny X-Men. And it's in print at the moment. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this review and commentary on Gambit number one, just released uh, this week, Wednesday, the 27th of July, 2022. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Stay tuned.